evening ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another live stream of dino defenders extreme behind the scenes uh we're gonna be doing some random stuff tonight um because uh, that's what i want to do um i just need to double check as well if i have my blurred version yes i do just in case i need to do the old spoilerinos uh, hello Harrison, hello Gary, hello Big Shark, how are we all doing? So, uh, right now we're going to be working on a shot of Mia. Um, hello Cardinal Tanistrophius, he's a cardinal now, I like it. So we want Mia head, Mia tiny, Mia side, Mia snow, Mia side, Mia, 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 Mia line. That one. Um, no way, is it that one? Let me see if I can find a file. So, yeah, I hope everyone's been doing okay. Uh, I've had a very busy week. Um, some of you might know our company I work for which uh, Tim of Chaos Theorem started up, this company, NFT company, dealing company, called um, Chronicle. Uh, had his first press release this week, which was exciting. And uh, yes, yeah, so I've been working on behind the scenes of that, um, and just organizing loads of stuff, so... Hello the Jurassic Amelia, he says, I'm early, hello Jack, hello there. Next week will be better, says Cardinal Tanistrophius. I might have to break some bad news, I might not be streaming next Friday. Um, but I might be streaming another night, I might see if I can nip a cheeky stream in next week. Um, because I've got this new job now, it's like a lot easier for me to go, no, I'm actually going to stream this, this night instead. Harrison asks, what do you like more, Cloverfield or 10 Cloverfield Lane? Uh, I prefer Cloverfield. 10 Cloverfield Lane is really good, but um, I prefer Cloverfield. I just think it's more interesting. Anyway, what are we looking for? Uh, oh, why, why do I want that? Um, where is this file? Let's see if I can find it. Aha! This one here. Okay. Just gonna see what it she basically looks like. Uh, just testing something, bear with me. No, actually, this full-size one is actually going to work. What I need to do is tweak it, so tweak her, the angle of her body. Uh, we'll go around like this. Uh, thank you for the $2 tip, Big Shark, that is most kind of you. Rectomia looks like she needs to have a shave. What? <laughs> Um, okay, so I need to put that bit there, and then copy this separate, separate it, and then stick that there. Uh, Cardinal Tanner Shreve is for five dollars. Thank you very much. Says me dumb. What exactly is an NFT? Uh, it's a non-fudgeable token. So, essentially, it's a. Uh, it could be anything. It could be a video, an image, a, a statue, a, a GIF, a meme. But it's uh, basically unique. So it has this um, stamp on it, which makes it the 
original version, which makes it non fudgeable. You can't can't fudge it. <laughs> um, and our company is going to deal with uh, basically creating collectibles on an app for we hope um, big franchise IPs because we're in the talks for some now um, and they would basically be verified on via the crypto market so via the crypto market you would know uh, exactly who had owned the collectible before you um, if you had one sold to you you'd be able to tell um, obviously it'd be legit so you'd, you'd you wouldn't get any um, uh, any way of people making fake versions. It's impossible via the crypto market. So, yeah, that's that's the idea. That's the aim. And uh, as we, as you probably read in that um, article, I don't know if you guys saw the article, but uh, uh, yeah, we've got we've got a lot of funding, and we're trying to create something really interesting. Uh, you know how people used to tra collect trading cards and um, uh, pogs and Pokemon cards you know whatever it might be uh, trying to bring that into the 21st century and really mix it up so and I won't give away our <laughs> inside secrets on what we plan to do um, but the, the main thing is like this Chronicle app when we launch it, even though I'm saying things like NFT and the crypto market, this app is going to be like coin based. So anyone can pick it up. You just use your regular bank details, regular cash and the, um, the Chronicle team deals with the crypto side of things behind the scenes. And um, yeah, so it should be... Uh, like basically you just pick up and pick up and use it and don't even think about the the complicated bit behind the scenes <laughs> hello Jack says pogs 2.0 yeah exactly <laughs> but you know how like trading cards they be like these bits of paper or card or whatever it is pogs are just like these circular cardboard discs or plastic discs or even metal discs at times they didn't really do anything whereas in with with the idea behind Chronicle is they can do anything. They'll be alive. They'll move. They'll interact. They'll be able to connect, do things, shift, evolve. No matter what it is, it could it could do it. Just as the imagination becomes limitless. Jack said they did move if you had a badass slammer. Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, they did move if you had a badass slammer. So, Mia might look a bit funny here, but I'm using this as reference. This is not the final Mia. Uh, although, actually, maybe I may have messed up her head. <laughs> She's like, ooh. Her neck is stretched out. Uh, let's try this again. Hello Jurassic Hero. Mm. You know what, I need to do that again. Non-fudgeable Tanistrophia says, uh, do you see blockchain technology as the platform method of securing both information and liquid trading? Yes. Although I'll be lying if I said I fully understood it all yet. I'm still learning a lot. I'm so what I'm going to be doing is basically uh I'm part of the the Chronicle Studio, so I'll be creating the collectibles themselves and seeing we're not creating them directly myself, but I'm going to have a team of people who we spitball ideas and I basically just direct them and make sure they're doing their job. <laughs> and I come up with ideas and see if they're workable. So, that's the plan anyway. 
You know what the problem is? I think her head looks a bit too big. That's the issue. Right, I'm gonna start her lines. And she's meant it's meant to be quite um small anyway. Gabe Five asks, is she curious or mad at something or is trying to uh she trying or is she trying something? Um y y she's explaining something. That's not her expression that she's gonna have in the final frame. You'll see that when I when I come to it. No drink tonight, asks Gary uh, Harrison. Uh, yes, I have got a drink. I've got a <laughs> I've got a Palmer Violet tea, <laughs> which is a extremely interesting tasting tea. If you've ever tried Palmer Violet, those little purple sweets, it tastes exactly the same as those, because it is those. Jurassic Hero says, just a weird question, but is there going to be a Dino Defenders Extreme censored version so that all audiences, no matter the age, can enjoy it? I'm just saying. Uh, no. No. any movies lately uh, we watched Raising Arizona last night I'd never seen that movie and uh, it's a great film very funny and there's a certain aspect of it I don't really want to spoil it because I know it's an old movie but it's actually just worth watching but there's something that happens in the film that I was like oh, okay they're just doing that and then it surprised me because what they were doing was like legit and I was like okay this is brilliant <laughs> I think it's an early Coen Brothers movie. Yeah, Big Shark's right. You can never censor Dino Defense Extreme. Exactly. I'm a free speech advocate. I don't want to censor anything. She's going to be sitting basically with her knees up. If 
I get her knees first, actually. That'll tell me where her arms should go. Could sort out the uh, scale of stuff in a minute. So obviously she's got a big old chunky arm. <laughs> Hello Tyler, he says a censored version. What the heck does that entail? It really seems pretty tame. <laughs> you just wait. Uh, how are things going, Terradome? Good, Tyler. Very good. Very, very good. She just redo her whole arm. This is uh, what happens when someone doesn't use all the like proper tricks <laughs> of drawing a uh, human. I think it actually looks better before. Cool, cool. Jurassic Hero asks, what are the main characters' names of Dino Defenders Extreme? Jess, Mia, Wesley, Rose, Jude, Hank, Victor, Buzz, Faye, <laughs> Ruby, Turner, Hunter, Walt, Pilot 2, up a little bit for you guys. Faye is bad. What's your favourite kaiju movie besides Godzilla? Asked Jurassic Hero. And he says mine's Pacific Rim. Um, yeah, I'll probably agree with you on that.
get the boobage right. Come on. Hi Jack, no messing around. <laughs> Who's the main protagonist in Dino Defense Extreme? Uh, there isn't one. Or is there? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Jack says, you, Pacific Rim. Dude, Pacific Rim's great. The sequel sucks, but the first one's great. Fudgeable Tanistropheus says Jurassic Hero, the protagonists are the Tanistropheus and their struggle for unity. Oh, they're unified, alright. Uh, now, actually, now I can see how I just need to make her legs bigger. Get this section here up the size of her knees. This whole section. Redo the boobage. That's going to be the bloody title of tonight's stream, isn't it? Redo the boobage. <laughs> Return to boobage. Yeah, check out Dino Defenders if you haven't already. What are you doing here? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You didn't have to have watched it. But you should have watched it. What are you doing here? But no, you didn't you didn't have to watch it. But really, what are you doing here? Go watch it. Jack says second best animated series on YouTube. Yeah, I know what you're going to say is number one. And uh, I'm inclined to agree. Because I already know what you're going to say is number one. <laughs> Mmm. <laughs> Alright, Quinnan. The time's up. Oh, 
<laughs> what's better than Dino Defense Extreme Mass Harrison? Uh, one of the best, if not the best. <laughs> Jack says the Mike Nolan show. <laughs> no, the Mike Nolan show is all right. No, the Big Les show. Big Les show on YouTube. Oh my god, it's so funny. But you kind of need to be uh, a little bit high to enjoy it. I think it's almost impossible to enjoy it without being high. Because one, I've never watched it sober. <laughs> and it's been years since I've watched it actually because uh, since I've had a baby. I, uh, not, since, not since I've had a baby, but since me and my wife have been trying for a baby and stuff, it's like, yeah, that kind of lifestyle has uh, has come to an end for now. Din din din. Din din din. Din din din. It's because you're British, Jack. You don't get Aussie humour. What do you mean I don't get Aussie humour? I get Aussie humour. Get the boo bitch right. Because she's crushing up. Right, anyway. I think... That's good. Right, now we need to do the colour. I'm going to use this one to basically colour her in. And I also need a full body. Full body Mia. Actually, you know what? Uh. Hello, Cretaceous the Hunted. Uh, see you later, Gary. Thanks for coming along. Tyler says, Have you always been creative slash artistic? How did you come up with the idea for Dino Defenders Extreme? Um... Oh. The idea behind Dino Defenders is a bit of a mix and match of things. Basically, I'll try and sum it up as quickly as I can. There is like a video on my channel called A Brief History of Dino Defenders. Maybe I could just direct you to go listen, watch that, but I'll give you a brief rundown now. Because, you know, I'm like that. I'm that kind of guy. Um, so... Myself and Tim wrote a script for this thing called The Silver Lion, this film we'd love to make one day. And uh, and once we were done with that, I was kind of still in the in the mode of like, oh, I'd love for people to know this story. So I started making an animated version. Um, and this came up, the animated version of that came about because I was working on my Mysterious Islands video, the making of Jurassic, well, the history of Jurassic Park 4, which is also on this channel. Um, and there's a section in that video where I was going over the John Sayles Jurassic Park 4 script that for the movie that never came out. And as I was making that, I was like, oh, this is really fun doing these like very simplistic storyboards. And when I was a kid, I used to do co draw comic books and stuff with my friend Ross all the time. Like we'd be drawing comic books all the time. Um, you know, simplified characters and characters that looked not too dissimilar to what we. Uh, what we um, what we see in Dino Defenders. If you guys remind me, I'll draw one of the old characters we used to draw in our comic books called Mr. Girling. I'll draw him so you can see and guess who he looks like. Anyway, um, and then yeah, so I was like, oh, I should do the Silver Lion as a uh, as an animated sort of storyboard type thing. So like you can watch it and you'll see the story play out with like animated storyboards and then I got a little way in and I was like you know what I really did enjoy doing something dinosaur related because the silver lion I actually thought would be better saving it because that's like 
something I'd love to make properly one day and I don't want it to get sort of spoilt through an animated series. So then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to start drawing something random and see where it takes me. And so I started drawing, I used the opening shot. So the opening shot of episode one of Dino Defenders Extreme is like an overhead view of the jungle moving uh, with a river meandering through it. And that's actually the tops of the trees from the opening of the Silver Lion and it was meant to be a road, not a river. Because uh, you were going to be like an area following a car going down the, this road for a forest. And so I added a helicopter and I wrote chapter one, the Petri dish as the title. And I, I, I was making up basically as I went along until about halfway through episode one when I was like, I had the idea for how this could play out really pop into my head. And because I'd written notes before and stuff like jotting down ideas and that like what I could do and then it sort of all started to fall into place the direction I wanted to take it halfway through episode one and then I was like hmm you know what I'll go back and tweak some things at the beginning of episode one and uh, I'll really flesh this out and years later that was in 2017 and here we are in 2021 and I'm really about halfway through animating or drawing and animating episode four <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. Hope that sums it up for you. Uh, see you later, Jurassic Hero. Because you can't wait for episode 4. Yes, I'm sorry, it's going to be a long while, but... It will get there, and... Uh, hopefully it'll be alright. Maybe next Jurassic June. <laughs> I'll premiere at the night Dominion premieres, so everyone will be talking on Jurassic or Dominion, and I'll uh, I'll release Dino Defenders episode four, so no one will care about it. <laughs> Tyler says it does. Very cool, man. Well, you are doing a great job. Thank you very much. If you fill on this, it always leaves this like one line of pixels. It's quite interesting. You just have to like sort of get rid of that. Big Shark says, "Oh, I'll care more about Dino Defense Extreme more than Jurassic World 3." Well, oh, thank you. Hello, Alex Lemon said, "Howdy ho, gang! I've arrived." Hello there, and Mikey. Hello. Nice to see you guys. So we're going to be doing, as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, uh, we're going to be just doing like some uh, random, random bits today. I've been on, uh, just in other news, uh, I've been on a huge Red Dwarf kick lately. And for those of you that don't know, Red Dwarf is like the greatest sitcom ever made. Um, and it's a huge inspiration for 
Terradome 3000, like the actual episodes Terradome 3000 on the channel. I've been making my way back through all the old series. And uh, if you haven't never watched it, I highly recommend it. It's very funny. There is a lot of British humour in there, but uh, I think there's a lot to a lot that people can get on board with. Obviously, there's a lot of '90s nostalgia stuff in it because it was made during the '90s. So there's a lot of references to things that uh, are from that era. But I think the jokes still work if you, even if you don't exactly know what they're talking about. Alex says, I'm hoping those rumours about the kids drifting towards Isla Sauna in Season 4 of Camp Cretaceous are true. I'd love to finally see a clan war between the Tiger Striped and the Quill-Headed Raptors. Hmm. Eh. I mean, technically, and I hate to break this to you, technically, those quill-headed raptors are the tiger-striped raptors. It's originally in Jurassic Park 3 they were retconning the designs of the raptors. Mikey says, I remember it was a big ship with only four people. The cat became a man. Yes, it was funny. Y yeah, it's great. It's just also like the uh, ingenious of it. Like other sitcoms, most sitcoms are set just like, you know, on Earth. <laughs> well, actually, all other sitcoms are set on Earth for the most part. And uh, in someone's house or in a bar or something like that. But what Red Dwarf did was it was like, no, let's take the sci-fi element. Let's go into outer space and let's actually tell like interesting sci-fi concepts. Although, obviously, some of them don't like work at all because that's the joke. Like when you start playing pool with planets... <laughs> It's uh, it is ridiculous, but um, but it brings some ideas to the table that's really good. And I've seen a lot of like big modern sci-fi things, basically do what Red Dwarf did like decades ago. And I'm like watching these things, and I'm like, hang on a second, this is a really serious sci-fi take on something I've seen in Red Dwarf. I think they were kind of ahead of the curve on some things. The first couple of series, you know, obviously it looks really dated and old. And the whole show looks dated because it's meant to look like that. But, um, you know, as they go through seasons three and f four onwards, four's like where it starts to really feel like classic Red Dwarf. Like they've, they've got it down. Like the whole, um, you know, the feeling of how the series, of why people love the series. Um, five and six are the same as that but then the newer ones have been releasing like as the guys who play the characters they had a, like a big hiatus between seasons eight and nine nine's like a movie um, when they came back ten onwards it like it really feels like seasons four five and six again I kind of want to put a Red Dwarf reference somewhere in there. Dino Defenders. Red Dwarf over Black Mirror. He says non-fudgeable. Tanatrophies. Yes, definitely. Yeah, Crichton driving a tank, says Alex. Yes. Didn't they get a small screen, a green ship later on, like a shuttle or something? Yeah, that's Starbug. 
That's their like ship they use to fly out of Red Dwarf. Alex says, I think we've reached a point where Jurassic Park 3 is nostalgic, which makes me feel ancient because my mum and grandma took me to see it when I was still in elementary school. <laughs> I've always had nostalgia for Jurassic Park 3. Not necessarily always good nostalgia. <laughs> Okay, so... reminds me of Mystery Science Fear 3000. Yeah, yeah. Red Dwarf, Mystery Science Fear 3000. They're all cut, they're cut from the same cloth. Especially when you look at like the scutters from uh, Red Dwarf. And compare those to Crow from, uh, or even, um, oh god, I forget the girl robot's name in Mystery Science Theater, the giant one that with like the big blue head. Like they look very similar. Red Dwarf has a better budget though. <laughs> Like the effects are much better in uh, in Red Dwarf. this and then go in and neaten up all the rough lines. says Jack. Yeah, yeah. Alex asks, aren't they funded by the BBC? Uh, yeah, they were, like a BBC North uh, company. Back before... Back when the BBC actually made good stuff. Before their race propaganda. <laughs> Hello Unfitted Rogue, welcome back. Uh, see you later non-fudgeable Tanner Trophius. Have a productive stream. Thank you man and thank you for the tip again.
Mikey says, I remember a marionette show called Terror Hawks, Zelda with her electric shock hairstyle, and I'm so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the Jerry Anderson shows that I never really watched. Um, I know my dad loved it, um, and it's something I should get really get around to watching. I'm a huge fan of Jerry Anderson. As I've mentioned in previous streams, Like I loved Captain Scarlet and Thunderbirds, all that sort of stuff. It's funny because like in Red Dwarf, all the... Um, miniatures and stuff look like they could be from Thunderbirds. Maybe even they were made by the same people. Um, Starbug looks like, well maybe not made by the same people, I don't know. Or maybe the same like artists worked on it. The Starbug looks very much like Thunderbird 2 even with the name down the side. I mean that might have been its, its inspiration really. Trying to get her thumb to look, not look so stubby um, get rid of that red bit Trying to neaten up the lines a bit. Okay. Right now, let's work on the eyes. She has, yeah, just the thin eyebrows. Mikey says, indestructible Captain Scarlet. I like the way the Colonel White's desk moved and that all the code names were colors. Yeah, great show. Amazing show. Okay, get rid of that. And that. I just 
just need to get the color of her eyes and then do her mouth and then do the lighting and then this will be done and that'll be the first one done and it took about an hour or 55 minutes really because I did start five minutes late uh, Okay, uh, OBS just di disconnected and then reconnected, so I hope that didn't make too much of a uh, impact on the stream. Oh god. <laughs> Don't cancel me. Uh, Harrison, I can't talk about Jurassic World Dominion, I'm afraid. Uh, Alex is talking about if they get to sauna in Camp Cretaceous. He's saying, I'm kind of in love with the image of sauna as a pillaged place, the ecosystem thrown out of whack from InGen relocating most of the dinosaurs, whatever remains struggling to survive. I'm picturing something similar to the 05 version of Kong Skull Island, or Skull Island. A hellish jungle overthrown with desperate predators willing to eat anything because little by little their environment is collapsing. Sounds awesome. Uh, I don't think CC would do that justice though. Alex, uh, Terran Fever, and what would you like to see them do with Isla Sauna? Uh, in all honesty, man, I can't really talk about anything like that. <laughs> Not because I know something uh, in particular. Uh, I just can't talk about it. a little bit too small there I think <laughs> I 
<laughs> Harris says in his head, shut up, just shut up Jack, Universal is watching this stream. No, it's not that, it's just I... Uh, I don't want to say anything and then it turns out not to be true. Or gets contradicted. And ultimately breaks an NDA. Like, I don't want to break my NDA. I'm not like these losers who post uh, spoilers online. But those people who work on the production, you can't keep it in their goddamn pants for five seconds. Because they want the glory. They want the glory. And they send it to people who are like, No, I won't, sh I won't show my friends, I promise. <laughs> it's like, of course you will. Of course you will, because what I'm about, to, what I want to show you is freaking amazing. Of course you're going to show all your friends. You're going to say you've seen something and you can't show it and you promised you did, wouldn't. And then lo and behold, bish bash bosh, it's all over Twitter. I know how these things work. It's best just to not say anything at all. She had some pupils. <laughs> She's like staring. Whoa. Whoa. Mikey says, I'm pleased Grant, Ellie, and Malcolm are coming back. Me too. Me too. Okay, so. Oh, that looks a bit weird. this eye not looking right. says I think green is the sexiest eye colour for women. Is that because you're an ancient Chinese god who is uh, practically mummified waiting for the green eyed girl to come so he can sacrifice her and uh, 
regenerate his body. Is that... Are you Lao Shea? You're Lao Shea, aren't you? Just admit it. No, not Lao Shea. What the hell am I talking about? That's from Indiana Jones! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to look this up now. Who did I meant to say? Why did I say Lao Shea? <laughs> oh my god. Low pan. <laughs> That's what I was meant to say. I was meant to say low pan, not Lao Shea. Oh my god. Jesus. I'm an idiot. That whole joke just went instantly down the drain. Uh, Harrison says, um, Sorry, Pterodome, but that in itself was confirmation that Ellie and Grant and Ian are returning, so I'm sorry, but you're fired. Colin Trevorrow. <laughs> He can't fire me because I'm too good at keeping secrets. Okay, uh, right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to So now, uh, Alex said, "Odd question, but how would you write a dinosaur-centric episode of Captain Planet?" I have no idea. Ian Nipper asks, "Hello, Ian. Do you have a favourite Jurassic Park World parody? If so, what is it?" Hmm. That's a good question. I think the uh, the Rick and Morty episode of. Uh, Anatomy Park is a pretty good one. Um, that's that's one that jumps to mind. Oh. Um, and Naked Gun Thirty Three and a Third at the Oscars scene. With Geriatric Park is also another good one. And uh, Godzilla 98 is a good parody. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm a joking. Thank you. 
by parody you mean rip off <laughs> yeah yeah the Godzilla 98 scenes where it rips off the lost world in Jurassic Park with the baby uh, the baby Godzillas the baby Godzillas their babies and their Godzillas their Godzilla babies Okay, that's that done. Um, I will save this. Okay, now I'm gonna have to work out what I do, what I want to do next. Uh, I could continue the frame I was doing at the end of last week, which let me open it up. Uh, Which is this one? Would you like it if Universal produced direct-to-DVD animated film adaptions of the novels? Asked Alex. Uh, yeah, I would like that if they uh, if they you know didn't censor the content and put a lot of money into the animation, so it doesn't look like Pam Cretaceous. Harrison says, I always thought if they were going to do an adaption of the book, it would be on a streaming service and it would probably be like a six-part miniseries, miniseries for each book. Yeah, I mean, you would need a huge budget for those books. And even though, uh, even I don't think a miniseries would cut it. I mean, you'd have to, you'd be throwing the budget for a movie on every episode, essentially. <laughs> Be ridiculous. 
Well, you do like a budget for a movie and then shoot all the episodes at once, but yeah. I don't see that happening anytime soon. said Jack you should watch Better Call Saul uh, maybe I don't know if I ever have time I could do for this. It's more just adding the uh, debris on the ground, I guess. bits on the floor I think. Wait, what was what's this? Oh that's the light, okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna cook this layer of details. That's where we go in and add all the little bits of debris Uh, detail done. Alex says, looking great so far. I love the shading. Well done. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, so this... This frame is uh, probably going to need more work, actually, when I come to editing the frame in full. So I might actually move on to something else uh, in a second, because I think this is actually done for the most part. this bit You know what that will do for now. So I'll save that. Uh, right, what can I work on now? Uh, let me just have a look. Um, oh, I know. This one? No. This one? Yes. Yes, this one. Um, I do need to pull up. Drip bag. I don't think you're even really going to see this actually in this shot. So what I'm going to do is come out. Gonna blow this up more. Maybe a little bit further out. Uh, no, I think he's Harrison. He's talking about Cam Cretaceous. Or did uh, Alex? Wait, you said, I, are there any plans for plesiosaurs? It'd be cool if you did a rafting scene with them. Oh, you're talking about Dino Defenders. Um, no, no, there's no plesiosaurs in Dino Defenders. There is the Leopard Seal hybrid, though. So this frame actually is going to be following on from when I open it up. Um, where are we looking? Uh, oh wait, I didn't finish it, did I? Because I didn't add the screen. This frame here we did a couple of weeks ago where Rose is going insane. <laughs> 
uh, on the bed. Ah! So speaking of which, actually, I need to cut her out. Just so I've got her here. those leopard seal like in happy feet said Alex Lemons yeah have you watched Dino Defenders episodes 1, 2 and 3 are on my channel right now you should you should watch those episodes uh, but in they've got this here where is it <laughs> Wait, do I not have it on me? Wait, why don't I have it? That's weird, why can't I find it? Oh, maybe it's in... Episode 2 assets, let's have a look. Did I move it over to there? Hmm, that's strange. I didn't. Where is that? Did I move it over to here? I have lost the seal. <laughs> Where is it? You remember getting up so early to watch the premiere of episode three, Harrison? Nice. Yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a while before episode four's out, but it's gonna be the better one. It's gonna be the best episode yet. I honestly have lost the seal. I can't believe this. I've lost the actual file for the seal. That's hilarious. Here we go. There it is. Yeah. So that's a leopard seal hybrid with a Paniosaurus. I think that's how you pronounce it. Like a Mosasaur. That's in the episodes of Dino Defenders. Ian Nipper says, Do you think the dinosaurs would look better or worse if the Jurassic franchise was more scientifically accurate? Uh. I can't say if they'd be better or worse unless I saw what they actually look like. Um, yeah. Sorry for the the non-answer, but that's really that's all I have to say on that. Really, <laughs> you wouldn't know unless you actually could compare them. So now let's go layer new this one white. Just so we can do that, and then we can get layer new rows lines. And we can start on doing our rows. A 
It's sad that there's only two episodes left of Dino Defender, says Harrison. I'm sorry it's sad for you, but oh my god, I'm so happy that there's only two left. <laughs> and there's so much to do. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, I do need to get a sh open rose character sheet. Where is she? Here she is. So I can get the front view of her. Just so I can make sure. That's actually a really good angle, actually. So firstly, she's got the bandage on her face like this. Line of serpents, hello, he says hi, I got my wisdom teeth out today. Nice. You know what? I've never had any of my wisdom teeth out or anything. Have you started any scenes for episode five? asks Harrison. Uh, the only thing I've done for episode five so far is I've written notes for dialogue and where the story's gonna go. And I've designed a poster. Like a teaser poster. I had an idea for a poster and I just started on it and I didn't want to like forget it so I just started work on it one day even though it's going to be like ages before anyone sees that Jack says, I think you should get zombie into episode 5. <laughs> well, I was thinking, I was thinking episode 5, I should basically just draw it really crap and really fast. Like, if I was to draw Rose, she'd be like this. <laughs> like, she'd be like... Ah, and like, yeah, just <laughs> super fast and really crap. It's like the whole series basically just gets, gets to like episode 5 and it's like the worst thing ever. <laughs> Something. 
yeah, I'll probably redo the hand. Um, Basically, draw it. Oh, can't get, can't see Rose. Hello, Alec. Any interesting ex existential JP Law discussions going on today? No, not much. Oh, sorry. I really appreciate your content. Thank you very much, Alec. Ian says a lot of people have compared Camp Cretaceous to Star Wars Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels in terms of quality. Do you think this is an apt comparison? Uh, I haven't watched any of those Star Wars shows, so I can't really say. Sorry, man. Second, I oh, know I am right. Let's about to say is her arm wrong? But now I got it right. Uh, tweet that. Harrison, it's been, Harrison says it's been ages since that teaser for episode three with the Kentrosaurus and Kentrosaurus. It's my favorite Stegosaurus. So thank you, thank you very much. It's my favorite Stegosaurus too. Uh, Alex says, I think your series could benefit from a little increased sex appeal. I recommend a femme fatale type character with a slinky dress, opera gloves, and a cigarette holder. Very classy, very hot. Well, you wait till this episode. Uh, legendary. Hello, how are things? Good, very good. Reminds me of my granny. She's insane, says Alex. <laughs> Too weird. Uh, no, actually, it looks. Ah, 
that's actually. funny it's like acting I'm like acting out her um, what she's doing in my mind it's like I've done two like just then basically what I did was two cuts like I went now to the actor I was like now you just just try this way uh, and let's see how that works and then she did it another way and I was like yes that works much better Legendary Ask, any drastic misconceptions you want to talk about, Jack? Uh, if I'm honest, not really. There's not much else to cover at this time. Like the biggest one I want to tackle is like would require like a full-on video. Like I want to talk about the the misconception that the, the dinosaurs are heroes in Jurassic World, in the Jurassic World series so far. There's like misconception about that but I want to get like video evidence and stuff for that and, and that just requires time as well so I've just realized I've made a terrible mistake ah uh, you know what it's gonna require copying Going all the way back to get Rose's head. There we go. Oh. Right, and then copying this. realize how bloody huge her hand is
Okay, so it's looking a little bit messy. So what I might do is a new layer. <laughs> Change this one to blue. Like that. And then draw her again with red. So here we go. <laughs> We're getting there. Just I want to make sure I've got her looking right. I might go get a glass of water uh, once I've done this. exaggerate her fingers a little bit more because she's meant to have those knobbly old fingers Sand. Ian asks, do you have a favourite product, i.e. toy, video game, attraction, etc., that's related to the Jurassic franchise? Uh, the Big Red Rex from the toy line was something I grew up with loving, so I'll say that. Alex, Blue isn't a hero, she's just being conditioned to not be as homicidal as most raptors. If the CC kids ran into a pack of t Lost World Tiger Stripes, they'd be really screwed until the gymnastics begin. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm not really taking into account Camp Cretaceous. I would say this misconception doesn't work when you bring in Miss Camp Cretaceous, because the dinosaurs are heroes in in that series. Like, you know, the the Baryonyx, one of them gets shot by these hunters, and then they deliberately go and stalk those hunters onto their boat to go get revenge. It's like, come on now, what is this? I'm talking movie specific, really. Okay. Uh, I feel like I might be forgetting something. Uh.
Right, okay. Um, we've got her screaming there. Got this, and then we've got white. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go grab a glass of water, uh, and then I will be back. Okay, one second, guys. Hello Mike Tharn, he says Bloomin' heck, I finally made it to a Teradome 3000 stream. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. Right, so let's add the colour to this nasty lady. You see what I'm doing now with this color. A little bit too bright with the white. So she's having NAM flashbacks. 
And Mike Farm says, you're looking well, Jack. How's the wife? And the wee one, I'm doing good, working on a colour project for a foundation proposal. Nice. Yeah, you've been really busy, Mike. I've been sort of watching your progress from the sidelines. It's really impressive, man. Um, yeah, wife's good. Wee one is amazing. Uh, she's so darn cute. And I know parents say that about their own children, but she is very cute. <laughs> um, and also a little pain in the butt when it's five in the morning and she, my wife's brought into the bed with us because she's, uh, you know, making noise in the other room. So we bring her in with us because sometimes she'll fall asleep in the bed with us. And then, you know, she climbs over my face to try and get to my bedside unit to pull stuff off. She always wants to hold what she sh can't hold. But no, they're doing uh, they're doing great. And uh, and I'm doing good. It's a big week for me. I've just basically completely changed my job situation. And now I f full time work from home. Which is nice because I get to spend time with the little one. And then I get to work at night. Or during the day. And that means I'm also free more to do stuff like what we're doing right now because I am now because of no work tomorrow I'm under no obligation to stop at midnight aside from the fact that I've got a baby that I have to look after when I wake up <laughs> so do I want to go to bed on time and get some good hours sleep before she wakes up at 5 or do I want to go to bed at 5 as she's getting up <laughs> and my wife uh you know, rips me a new one. Because why have you gone to bed this late? But uh, there's no obligation to actually stop dead on 12, so if I run over, it's not really a problem. I just stop when I really want to stop, so. Which is good! Alex asks, which of the Walking With trilogy do you prefer? Dinos, beasts, or monsters? Uh, d I haven't watched monsters in full, I don't think. I think I've seen an episode of it. Um, beasts I liked, but it has to be dinos. Walking with dinosaurs was was something else. The only thing I think Walking with Dinosaurs could have benefited from more, um, and I and I really I do like the uh, the narrator. But if they had got David Attenborough, I think that would have been monumental. It's really annoying because they probably was a scheduling thing, but they it was a BBC production, so they probably could have got David Amber. Uh, Ian asks, "Was there an uh, was there ever a hilarious moment in the Jurassic films that made you laugh?" Um. I'd say actually the biggest laugh when I was a kid I didn't really laugh at the movies uh, even if they were doing jokes I just never really found them to be that funny <laughs> uh, even though there was like jokes um, however Fallen Kingdom got me to laugh uh, it was the Owen lava sequence and I was laughing because I was taken aback because that wasn't a scene I knew was going to be in the movie and uh, and when that started playing out I was just having so much fun with the movie that I just started laughing at the absurdity of the situation that Owen had found himself in I, and, I, and I'll admit like I felt tense watching that because I was like oh god like imagine being in that scenario your body's all like uh, numb and you can't exactly move it properly it's like getting pins and needles and trying to do stuff when you've got pins and needles in your feet. Obviously a lot worse. And then you've got this like lava slowly crawling towards you. And I just remember laughing. I don't usually laugh out loud in, in movies, but I did laugh at that. I was like, ha! Probably a bit more than that, but... <laughs> um, I just remember sitting there thinking, this is hilarious, so fun, and also that is terrifying. And it's just something I wasn't expecting. Um, in a 
to see in a Jurassic movie, and I and I just I just thought it was really good. Just it, it made me f remember to have fun. That's that's the key. Alex says, I don't think Attenborough was a big name back then. Yes, he was. In 1999, when Walking with Dinosaurs came out, he was a huge name. David Attenborough's been going since, like, the 60s, 70s? And he, he was huge in the 90s. I remember watching him all the time. He was, like, a household name even back then. Alex says, being a prisoner in your own body is one of my worst fears. Mmm, yeah. Yeah, that is terrifying. You just know him from the planet Earth stuff. Well, um, there's a there's one from I believe it's like the early '90s called The Secret Life of Plants, which is um it, which is coincidentally my favourite uh, David Attenborough documentary. Um, it's all about plant life, and they speed up the footage, and it just makes the plants look like they're animals, and then he sort of narrates it as if they're like like he's looking at animals, and it's fascinating. And really trippy at times, and it's like you just realise that plants, these organisms, they're living on a total different sort of time frame to the rest of us. It is fascinating. Hello, Trish. Attenborough's in general have always been top dogs. Yes, definitely. Mike Thumb says Attenborough's been huge since the 70s. Never been unpopular since. Hmm. And obviously his brother was in uh, in this little movie. You may have heard of it called Flight of the Phoenix. Great movie, you should check it out. Uh, Harrison says, I better be going. Bye, everyone. This has been fun. Thank you, Harrison, for coming along. It's been nice chatting. Also, he did that documentary of the chimps hunting monkeys, says Legendary. Yes, yeah. Chimps are nasty creatures. Alex says, I think his health is declining. He sounded so tired in the India series. I haven't even watched that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't imagine. he. I would probably say he should have retired a while ago. Not just because he sounds tired, but I feel like the man should give himself a break. Enjoy some retired life. Bask in his achievements for some years. But he's just going to be. He's probably under the BBC thumb <laughs> to like do documentaries until his last day. <laughs> I was about to make a really horrible joke. Then I think I'll save that one. <laughs> Legendary says, but the BBC need him because they have no content. Well, yeah. He's like the last bastion of good BBC television. And even then, you know, it's not exactly the best. And I'm saying that as somebody who's a nobody.
I haven't spent four months on a mountain range waiting for one particular goat to wander past. <laughs> Just so they can use ten seconds of footage in the new David Attenborough documentary. Trish says, if his health wasn't flattering, uh, faltering, I'd want to see him on Naked and Afraid. <laughs> David Attenborough. <laughs> I've never watched Naked and Afraid, but I can already guess from that title what that's about. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Now I must defecate in the bush, wipe it with a leaf, because I have absolutely no clothing on, not even a way of capturing my waste as it falls from my body. I must dig a little hole and pray to God I don't get found by some wandering bear which would see me for lunch. Day 47. I've caught my genitals again on another thorn bush. These bloody things can't, they seem to have a vendetta against the Atterborough name. Legendary says, do you still pay the TV license? Because a lot of people are pretty much rebellion against them after the Princess Diana story. I have never owned a TV license. Me and my wife, we we don't you don't need one. You only need one if you're gonna watch live TV. If you're not gonna watch ever watch live TV, which we don't because there's nothing on TV that's of any good. Just daytime shit. Um you don't need one. You can just uh, watch YouTube with the internet or Netflix or anything like that. So why even have a TV license? Why would I pay for something I don't watch? <laughs> and also, uh, can't choose what they make. So if they make the BBC is making a lot of like. Well, I said race grifting earlier, but that is basically what it is. Race propaganda is all they have to talk about. Because they're failing numbers. I think any people really watch BBC now for the news. And even then, it's like, is it really news? You just need to become a subscription service like Netflix and then no one would complain because no, no one would be watching but the thing is like they I think people would go over if the if the BBC went over to having like a subscription service there would be enough people for them to go over and their content would get better I think for it because they wouldn't be beholden to some sort of I don't know mentality that's behind there ideology that's behind their current setup. They wouldn't be so beholden to uh, to taxpayer money. Did you hear about the news about Anaconda being rebooted? No, I did not. Why are they rebooting Anaconda? <laughs> What's the point? I guess like it wasn't that good to begin with, so like they can uh, 
try and make improve it, I guess. to turn it into something like the Meg, says Alex. Oh, really? <laughs> Mike Pham says, sounds like a snake in the grass rumour to me. Yeah. Mike Farm says maybe they'll correct that reversing waterfall shot. Yeah, imagine if like they rebooted it and that's the only change they did. Like <laughs> they re re they said we're rebooting Anaconda and it's just the exact same film except that one waterfall shot is uh, the right way around. And for some reason, for whatever reason, like that's what makes everyone love Anaconda. <laughs> everyone just falls head over heels for Anaconda after that. Trish says it's going to be hard to top John Voight's creepy o stare. <laughs> yeah. John Voight. John Voight. The Voight of John. John Voight is John Voight. You know when you say something and you don't even like think about what you're saying? Why the f fuck did I just say John Voight is John Voight? <laughs> oh god, I'm getting tired. It's happening again. I'm getting tired. I'm 
maybe that's why I'll name the stream. Just, just, just no one. This is the thing about these streams. Like, I have no idea what people who don't really know the channel think if they see like a video called Jan Voigt is Jan Voigt. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> like, the YouTube algorithm would be like, well, I'm not going to push that out, Jack, because we have no idea what you're talking about. What is it even promoting? Hello, Seeker. It's nice the little YouTube community uh, of Jurassic fans, because I, I was watching uh, the Brad Jost's uh, Jurassic Park podcast Wednesday live stream, and I see Seeker in the chat chatting away, and I'm like, ah, oh, look, there's a uh, there's Seeker. It's nice to see uh, people supporting other channels in the Jurassic fandom. My fam says they can improve upon Owen Wilson's. Wow! Oh, wow. nice that they've become connected over the year 2020. Sika? Is it Sika or Sika? Sika. Right now duplicate the layer. This one we're going to blur it. And then we can rub out the area closer to the frame so it can actually uh, Both see Aka Haka, see Haka, see Haka, see Haka, see Aka. All right, I like it. How would you write a plesiosaur attack in the lost world? Uh, I'd do land that lambed that time forgot. So, Malcolm, if we're going by the film version, Malcolm. Uh, Eddie and Nick arrive on Isla Sauna and as they pull into the lagoon after the whole like five deaths he says scene uh, they pull into the lagoon to de to get their vehicles off and that's when a plesiosaur attacks them and they gun it and uh, Eddie shoots it and kills it instantly with his Lindstrad air rifle there you go done and the, and the boat captain like gets scared he doesn't get eaten though. No one gets eaten. Just because it's a bit too soon in the movie to have someone eaten. Hello, Dino Park Media. How are we doing? Good to see you here.
Would have been nice to see that air rifle in use. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm with the opinion of the opinion that we should have seen uh, um, him. He killed the doe. Like he shoots the female T-Rex and takes it out. Like, wouldn't that have been kind of cool to see Eddie like take out one of the T-Rexes? I mean, you got two of them, so you, you know. This frame is almost done. Just, a bit, just need to touch it up here or there. Just neaten it up. there be more plesiosaur scenes or one and done uh, I'd say one and done maybe you'd see him at the end when Kelly is like well <laughs> I'm gonna say something that's probably a divisive opinion here but when Kelly is dreaming about the loss uh, about how Isla Sauna is gonna look you know where you see all the dinosaurs living in harmony or whatever uh, or whether you take that as fact it doesn't really matter but you can see him there Titan of Serpent says, but then you don't get his death with him being ripped in half. One of my favourite deaths in the movies. I know, there'd be some sacrifices. Hello, uh, Marcy. Sierka uh, says, this came from the novelization right have you read the fallen kingdom novelization there's some interesting changes uh no i haven't actually i haven't read the the fallen kingdom one um it comes from the novelization of the lost world and the comic book and this uh hinted at in the script that what you see at the end of the lost world is not um exactly true it's kelly's kelly envisioning how she how she sees uh, sight B going down. It's like a dream. It's the first dream sequence, technically. Everyone thought Alan Grant's dream of the raptor was the first one, but apparently not. Trish says, if you were John Hammond, would you go about things differently or the same as him? Well, <laughs> well if I went the, the way the same as him, Nedry would betray me and everything would go to shit. So I definitely would do it differently. <laughs> For one, I'd go the Maserani route and have all the dinosaurs in massive walled enclosures. Like, <laughs> walls work, people. Walls work.
Actually, just to go back on the whole to Titan's point about how you don't get Eddie's death, like, imagine if they took Eddie's gun. I know it obviously went over the car, over the cliff, but if they showed a shot of, like, when he was picked up by the T-Rexes that he dropped the gun, and then uh, someone took it, and then during the T-Rex attack on the uh, on the engine's hunter camp, someone used, like, the gun on the T-Rex, maybe even Ian, like there was only one shot left and someone took out the T-Rex <laughs> you just want to see that gun in use like they build it up so much so you know do I want to draw She works there. Time the service says Robert Burke lives then. Uh, yeah, until he enters the Raptors, uh, the long grass. Alex says, but that scene at the end was inland. How would we see plesiosaurs? Well, it wouldn't be inland in the, uh, in my version. <laughs> if, if it had to have plesiosaurs, it'd be like, you know, you'd see the ocean. You'd get, see the ocean from a cliff top. The ocean would be in sort of a distance and you'd see plesiosaurs like, I don't know, diving out of the ocean like dolphins. And then the camera pans and you see the T-Rexes and, and all that. So there'd be like a, a pan. Some of that Burke sweat. Burke and sweat. John Voigt is John Voigt. <laughs> Okay. Be like a whole pod. Maybe not even the ocean, maybe like an inland like lagoon. Nedry being hammer and sun is a pretty old misconception, says Trish. Yeah, that's not, I don't even think that's a real misconception. He's called Dennis Nedry. It's like, so I don't think he's called Dennis Hammond. 
Um, Siaka says, don't know if you knew this already, but Evolution of Claire oddly gets Zack and Gray's father's name incorrect. They call him Pete. They do, however, keep the fact that sawn dinosaurs are being transferred in the 2000s. Yeah, I did know about that. That book is, let's just say, lacking somewhat. Okay. Um, I'm just going to get rid of some of the lines on the background there. Okay. Okay, that's that's good. Okay, if I'll save as what can I save this file as? Let's have a look at the names I've got. So we got uh, just looking back through the fra frames. says well there's a number of explanations my preferred one being Dennis kept his mother's last name after the divorce to spite Hammond I don't think Hammond would talk uh, I don't think they would talk to each other if he was if he was Hammond's son I don't think you'd get this line of dialogue where he's like you go around this whole park on minimal staff for up to three days you think that kind of automation is easy or cheap you know I debug two million lines of code what I bid for this job but if you can you can, if you can find someone who can debug two million lines of code what you bid for this job if you can, I'd like to see you try. <laughs> like, he, he's talking about him being hired and stuff. He doesn't, never brings up, they never bring up family. When he says, thanks, Dad, it's a sarcastic, like, Hammond's pretending to be his, like, he's saying, Hammond, stop being my dad, essentially. <laughs> Legendary says, and Lewis Dodson is now Nedry's stepfather, which is why he's sabotaged back. Yeah, and that means Timmy. Timmy is actually um, Nedry's son. Yeah. Oh, that was some hard swallowing. Um, 
Hmm. I'm just trying to think if there's any other little frame that I can work on. Uh, uh, actually, you know what? There is one of rows. Another one of rows I can do. I go like this. Oh, no, don't want to do that. Hello Jurassic Unicast. Hello James. That's funny, we had Unicast, we had Mike Farm in here earlier. I don't know if Mike's still here. You gentlemen, uh, you're up late. What are you doing James? Are you, on, are you feeding the baby as you're watching this? <laughs> Going, please just sleep. Actually James, I have a question. Does your baby sleep? mic with no mic. Funny, I was watching you guys talk about Camp Cretaceous. I was watching the episodes five and six watch along videos uh, earlier today when I was working. Jurassic Unicast says, "Yeah, mate, she's an angel touch wood. She's a bit of she's in a bit of a routine." Oh my god, yours actually sleeps. Oh, jealous. <laughs> I mean, ours sleeps now, but in those early days, oh my word. Oh my word, it was like a nightmare trying to get him to sleep. Like I would I'd you'd have to like sort of bop her and then she wouldn't let you sit down. If you started to sit down she would wake up, start waking up, so you'd have to stand up bopping her until she's in like a proper sleep. And then you can slowly sit down and then uh and then you might be good. And I remember doing that and then you'd be trapped on the sofa. So you better make sure before you go through the whole bopping phase, make sure you've been to the toilet because you're not going to be going there for a few hours. And I remember like, um, uh, staying up to like four in the morning watching bloody Star Trek Enterprise. <laughs> like I'd start at like nine o'clock and so slowly get her down. And then, uh, 
and then by about I don't know ten she'd be asleep, and then I could actually I'd be sat on the sofa like and I can't move, so I'd be trapped there until she decides to fully wake, and uh, that'd usually be like two, three, four in the morning. So and then I'd be busting for a wee. Tiny surfaces touch wood. <laughs> you mean knock on wood? Yeah, it's got a, a different phrase where I come from. I know it's knock on wood, but there's also touch wood. You just touch wood. It sounds rude. <laughs> Alex says, if I was scripting the Lost World, I'd have included the scene where a couple of injured mercenaries managed to flee the long grass, fall into a marsh, and get besieged by Dometrodons. Hmm. My farm says touchwood also is a thing. It has origins in pagan beliefs. Yeah, it's dirty witchcraft. Legendary. Wow, he looks like he has been partying too hard in the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> she, she. Rose is a she. It's not a he. You have watched Dino Defenders, right? <laughs> Get out. Nah, not really. You don't have to, but do. You don't have to, but but you do. You don't have to watch Dino Defenders, but but you do. Or do you? Nah, you do. You don't. You don't have to, but you do. <laughs> don't worry, legendary. I'm just I'm just yanking your chain. Probably getting horrible feedback from my uh, stylus going right underneath the uh, mic whenever I paint like this. Mike Fun says, whoa, whoa, whoa there, Jack. I'm a pagan, I'll have you know. I shower regularly. <laughs> Siaka says, it must be watched. It's law. It's the law. It's the law. It's the law. I am the law. I am the law. Just sounds like I'm scrubbing on paper, says Mike. Oh, cool, thanks. Uh,
Jurassic Union Council says she looks like she belongs on Tom and Jerry with that shiner. Oh yeah. Oh look, here you go. Speaking of shiner, let's add a shine to it, shall we? <laughs> there you go. Alright, no. It needs to be more square. There we go. There you go. It's actually got a shine on it now. What if I uh, just add a little bit like that? How about that? I'm just progressing the blood down her face because this is meant to be after the other shot. So like the pre the previous shot in this sequence is where am I looking? It's this one here. So uh if I click play you can see Jude's lifting her out of the water and the drip's coming off her. He lifts her out like, oh, oh, <laughs> dunk you in the water. Rose lose her dentures when she flew out of the chopper. Uh, no, she has teeth. Uh, not many, though. A soggy senior, says Alex. This is a good point. If I copy the eyes, put them underneath, and then clear her eyes like that. There we go. Imagine seeing something like this in Camp Cretaceous, like someone with just like blood all dribbling down their face. And then if I put the lids, so copy and paste, put that in there. And then if I do it, so if I animate it like this, your eyes can open like Maybe turn it a bit yeah like that. So now if I 
Just fill in like this. Non fudgeable Tanner Streep, he says, Sorry, I missed the bulk of the live show. I hope things have been productive. Yes, we finished this frame. We finished this frame with uh, the firelight on Mia. Um, and we did a little bit more to the broken garage. Um, but then I realized I should do more of that later. And now we're working on a frame from earlier on in the episode, which I keep forgetting to do. Which is one where Rose... Uh, she opens her eyes. So there you go. We go. All I need to do is add a line over the whole of this. refreshing change thing is they like the the CGI in Camp Cretaceous like I've seen people do their own projects online that have sort of quality CGI that's almost as or if not better than some of the stuff you see in Camp Cretaceous so I bet that there's someone out there who could actually do like a Camp Cretaceous mock-up you know what I'm thinking? This eyelid shouldn't open properly. And maybe even this eye is screwed up. So looking down like this. Kind of like Ripley in Alien 3. <laughs> She's got that like one gammy eye for like half the movie. <laughs> There you go. So when she opens her eyes, she could be like, ah, look, and then I need to up the lid at this end. There you go. So she opens her eyes, she's like, oh. There you go. Looks good, right? So if I start it there. open Probably about there okay no like that uh, see you later Massey amazing time hope to be here next week there might not be a stream next Friday but um, I'll I'll keep you guys informed on the Discord when I might stream. It might be a different night. She looks sufficiently wrecked. Uh, now we need to open up uh, this frame. Okay, so John from episode 3 was on this stretcher. And that is what we're going to be basically putting Rose on. Not the same exact one, but one like it. Uh, so if I go into episode 3, assets, and see if I can find that shot of John. That'll actually just be in uh, frames, won't it? Uh, This one here. Yeah, I can. I can think. I can just use this. So if I just grab this bit, and we'll do a bit of uh, tweaking. Firstly, let's straighten it all up. 
like so. And then if we So what? Oh, you know what? I can just do it like this. Ooh, one one. We'll sort that out in a minute. Farm says Rose. <laughs> Rose, the human piece of tenderized meat. I'll be back, I promise. Uh, Alex says, I'm curious how you would incorporate dimetrodons into the lost world. Uh, I don't know. Replace the raptors in the long grass with dimetrodons. <laughs> you still have that shot of that guy going, ah! and this Dimetrodon jumps out of the grass. It just looks really silly. Sometimes, like the most simplest of things, I just overcomplicate it. Like this, uh, this bed. <laughs> it's like I could, I could have just drawn a whole new one, just got the colours, but I decided no, I'm going to copy and rip what I've done from another frame. It seems so long ago I was drawing this guy all wrecked, and now we're up to Rose. God, I was excited about episode three coming out <laughs> because I, I like I didn't think it was going to be achievable to do like the tower falling and all that sort of stuff. But lo and behold, we got there. And now episode 4 is presenting even bigger challenges. Notice though, that should probably be... Like this. And rows. Should probably be... A bit smaller. then make it bigger. And I 
have attached Rose's eyes to the bed. So, <laughs> so I don't use that as one layer. Uh, Alex asks, have you considered doing your own version of King Kong? Mm, no. If I'm honest. Oh god, the eye. <laughs> to the bottom of the thing. Do you feel bad beating up this old lady? <laughs> Poor woman. She's in my story now. Like this. 
looking good, says Jurassic Unicast. Thank you. If I copy and paste that, and then I can bring that over like this. Basically, match it to the other side because they're meant to be equal, aren't they? That's how these things work. Right, so those go like that, and then we add the shadow underneath the whole thing. Computer. I don't want bridge extension. Bugger off. What is this? Close it. Get it out of here. And then save this as lids. Row stretcher. Lids for eyelids. Gormless looking rose, rose stretcher, rose. Okay, now uh, do I still have? Let me load up. Hopefully this won't affect the stream. Right, new project, and we'll save that in episode four. Rose stretcher. Stay on this one. Uh, window capture. Save it as the edit. Oh, look at that! Perfect. We'll stick that. There, there we go. Right. So we'll just quickly edit this then. So let's load up. the rows and then we need to load up the 
be just a good stretch of grass. You know what? I might be able to do that in Photoshop quickly. So let's load up. Um, where, where, where are we going to find good grass? Episode 3 had a lot of grass, didn't it? Um, how's this? Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. So if I... This is like a shot from the top of the Raptor, Mega Raptor paddock fence with the hole that goes all the way under. I was I was proud of the perspective on this fence. Thought it looked cool. Um, so what I really want to do is basically copy that, paste it. And then image rotation like this, and then stretch it like that. Doesn't have to be perfect because you're not really going to see it. It's going to be blurred. Crop, and then we want to darken it at this end because of the. Oh God! What have I done? Put that back. Um, the flames and the fire and all that sort of stuff, because it would have been just after the, the accident. So add some glow and then we filter we box blur it. saturate this, this so it doesn't look looks like a piece of debris or something rather than a log we'll just blur that right save this as rose stretcher grass Go back to the edit. You guys are talking about something called Therizinosaurus or something. Whatever's uh, grass, right? Here we go. So firstly we're going to add the stretcher onto the timeline because uh, we only really want it to be about at most 20 seconds if that because then that sets our frame size and then I can add the grass underneath like this and then we can animate it so let's put the scale like this and we want it to be going like that, so and down like this, and the markers and at the end. Or we just, just do this all the way there. And that's the end. So we've got that that moves. And then rows, eyelids. And we want rows and the stretcher. Then the eyelids. Click those. We scroll all the way down to there. And then how long? Right, so we click. Oh, we're going to play. stretch that out so I can actually reach the little button and then maybe here the eyes lift up to 
there. And then stay open till about there. We can drop them a bit. Or lift it up and then drop them. And then up a little bit and then drop them completely. So there you go, so Ooh, I've just noticed a mistake. <laughs> that looks good. It's just it needs to be over a little bit here. Like that. Oh, why is why is Rose's eye moving? so infuriating there's like a little bit that's just poking up they're right there like why does it want to poke out bugger off even there go away okay I may have fixed it Hello Big Shark, welcome back. She looks demonic, says Alex. <laughs> the shark has arrived. You guys can't see what I'm seeing, I've just realised. I wonder why that is. So now if I just export this, sorry guys you can't see what I'm doing. I can see the preview window but you can't see it on, on the stream. Uh, thank you for the $2 tip Big Shark. Another tip, you are most kind. Uh, right, we'll say this is Rose Stretcher 1. Right and then export and hopefully that will Saying there's an error. Why? Why is there an error? Okay, you'll work doing that version. Weird. While we're waiting for that, let's go back to Photoshop and we can close that. We can close this. And we can close. 
Wait, file, save as, and I'll save as row stretcher edit. Because just in case I ever need this for whatever reason, it's always good to save the frame layers. <laughs> ah! Okay, almost done. Now I can just see if it works. weird. Let me try and export it again. That didn't work. You gonna work now? No. Why? 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 Why is it not working? Try this. Okay, that's working. Hopefully, that means I can put it into video pad and then. <laughs> Maybe I'll try it in video pad. Bear with me guys, I'm just trying to work out how I can edit this. <laughs> because for some reason my editing software is now throwing a wobbler. So again, okay, nah, you can't you can't save what you want to do. What's that? WAV file, MPEG file. Okay, so now if I go to edit and then change the screen to video pad. Okay, you can actually see what I've been doing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? So we've got the shot here. Rose eyes slowly open. And then her eyes close. And then we want it to be about there. We don't need all that. We might even speed it up to about 10 seconds. So let's have a look. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, now what I want to do is add in the edge of the frame, like so, just so we know what we're working with, and then just need to change the size, just, there we go, and now we're going to add some motion. Uh, to it, so basic just up and down. Just so you get the sense that she's being walked. Maybe a bit side to side. Just up the scale a bit, just so the side to side things aren't too much of a pain. And we'll do the vertical down a little bit. So, hopefully, now it looks like she's being walked. So, 
see? Um, I might even try a little bit of glow. Let's just see what the glow looks like. It might be a bit overpowering. Ooh. That's pretty strong. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna. Oh god, oh god, oh god. What have I done? I don't want to add the glow. Right. So let's render that. What did I say the last one is? Ah, I saved a space for it. That's nice. In the numbers. Because I've been meaning to do this frame for a while. <laughs> uh, we'll save that. HD and we'll create it right now if I go back to Photoshop one more time just did here we go so we can see it in all its glory so if I click play this is what it looks like Trish asks, did you have any consultancy on Camp Cretaceous? No. Uh, <laughs> Alex says, what's with the enchanted Christmas music? It's the uh, Golden Compass. No, it's the Polo Express soundtrack for PlayStation 2. You know what? You're, it's a good point. I've, uh, I, might, I should change that. Let's change the music for a bit. Let's go to a bit of Overwatch. Why not? Bit of classic Jack streaming music. Um, now you know what I actually want to edit this frame of Jess of Mia. Sorry. So if I save this, I have to save all the bits. Don't think. Yeah. Neofire BG background. Trish says, I'm wondering why its continuity was so loose. I wanted to make sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really contradict the canon aside from. No, not really. But aside from like actual details, like the Bloomin', for one example, the T Rex skull. Being crushed in Jurassic World, that blue, that's whole again in uh, Camp Cretaceous, or like you know when you see Main Street uh, missing in episode in season one, when the camera pans right where it should be over the Mos near the Mosasaur Lagoon, and there's just nothing there, stuff like that. But in terms of actual storyline, not much. Well, I mean there there is a few things I could really go to town on, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not. Uh, not doesn't deviate too far. Trish says, "I wish the show took canon as seriously as you did with Masary Global and DVG." Yeah, I mean, I wish that too. Jurassic Unicast says, "Jack, how out of interest? How much does Emma care? How much does Emma care about what?" Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back into the edit and then I'll finish, I'll do this frame in the edit. But I'm not actually going to show uh, 
this because it will take uh, and then I'll, I'll show you the final result when it's done uh, it shouldn't take too long though um, where am I looking about Cam Cretaceous oh my wife doesn't give two shits about it <laughs> she thinks it's stupid though You know what, maybe I can show you a bit. Let's go to the edit. Let's go to... Okay, so you can't see the preview screen, but I can show you what I'm doing in here. For whatever reason. Um, Can't see the uh, the edit screen. I wonder if no, it doesn't matter. Have you enjoyed any of it? Says Jurassic Unicast. Um, I enjoyed some aspects of it. Uh, I enjoy like the ideas that they present. But I just don't like the execution. Like I like the idea of Monolophosaurus stalking kids through a hotel uh, or like a complex or something. It's just the way it's executed is lame. Um, I don't mind the design of E750 in motion compared to like how it looks if you just take a still photo of it. Looks a bit goofy. Um, but in, in motion it looks really cool and intimidating. Um, I don't know I don't want to go on a big rant but like I love that the kids I can't remember who pointed this out now, it was a YouTube video I was watching. Like the kids don't find out about E750 for like what months, and then as soon as they find out about it, that's when it decides to show up. And not only that, there's two of them, so it's like, <laughs> it's like what have they been doing this whole time? Um, yeah, there's. N I I'm gonna be honest, like the show. I don't know, there's just a lot I don't like about the show. <laughs> okay, and then last bit. So I'm going to export this. Hopefully this will actually export now. No? Okay. You're going to do it that way. Alright. So let's go back to this one. Okay. Right, now we can go to the edit that is... Uh, uh, video pad. Okay, now let's open up... This... Uh, add files... Uh, file 1. You can see what we've done. I was doing the flicker of the fire on, on Mia. And I do actually want to add a glow to this, so uh, we want to animate the glow. So
<laughs> Legendary says, Camp Cretaceous was the most disappointing thing since my son. Anyone want some pizza rolls? The continuity group says, Trish, I have is the whole Doctor Who creating E750. I prefer the Indominus being the first hybrid. It just raises so many questions. Oh, yeah, and like in the way I see things, like E750 isn't the first hybrid, it, it's the Indominus. Like the Indominus, the way Masrani talks to, er, the way everyone presents that animal in the movie. Uh, I know, like the investors side of things, it can be a bit like um, different because they could be presenting it to the investors as like the first hybrid. But the whole like Owen going up to Masrani and saying, "You should talk to those people in the in your in that lab, that thing out there, that's no dinosaur." And like the fact that Masrani's like, show me your new dinosaur, my new dinosaur, and all this sort of stuff. It's like, it's just all pointing towards the fact that like that's the first time they've ever tried that sort of thing, and I guess like tried it and had it succeed. But they they never bring it up in conversation at all when everything's going wrong. Like they never say, oh woo, like this is going wrong, just like that time you tried to build that other hybrid, like this sort of thing. No one ever mentions it, it's just a bit suspicious. Okay, we're rendering that. And then we're going to go back to Photoshop now. Because I can actually show you once that's rendered the finished version. And then once I've done that, I think I'm going to be ending the stream. Because, you know, I don't want to go to bed. <laughs> Titan of Terms says, I pretty sure it was the video about the things in Jurassic movies you don't like. I watched at the very beginning of 2020, and man, I'm pretty sure you were talking about how excited you... Oh, he stopped talking. Uh, oh, worth a CC. Yeah, of course. Like, it's... It's just not cool. <laughs> That's the thing. It's just not cool to me. The characters are all lame. The show's just lame. Uh, and I know, like, there's that whole thing of, like, oh, it's made for kids, it's not for you. It's like, yeah, okay, but even for kids it's lame. If I was a kid, I'd find it lame. Uh, right, so let me just open up what I just did, which is this here. So now we can see how this is the picture version and then this is the video version so let's go and the video version goes like this with the fire flickering in front of her face so there we go guys so let me Get rid of that. So we did this frame. We did this frame of Rose going uh, crazy in bed, and we did this frame of Rose uh, slowly opening her eyes. And we also did where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh wait, I don't have it. Uh, we did a little bit more to this frame here. The unfinished uh, garage that's all destroyed. Shot f for ready for when the Megalosaurus attack. So we are getting pretty close to that, by the way. Um, also, well, I'll be doing streams uh, all through the whole section of the Megalosaurus attack on the base. So, yeah. Um, we're getting pretty close. That's going to be really fun because we're actually going to be animating big theropod dinosaurs on stream. So, and you'll get to see them in all their glory. Uh, Trish says I'd be fine with E750 if it wasn't the past, but the hybrid after the Endoraptor. Working backwards on something already made, Jurassic World never works well. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to watch Naked and Afraid, Trish. <laughs> and uh, Big Shark says, "All right, guys, it was fun stopping. See you next week." Uh, Big Shark, I don't know when I'm going to stream, but um, I'll let everyone know in the Discord um, when that will happen in the Dino Defenders uh, thread on the Discord. And you can join the Discord via the link under this video, I believe. Um, 
yeah anyway guys I hope you've enjoyed tonight's stream thank you everyone who gave me tips Big Shark and Cardinal Tanastrophius or uh, non-fudgeable Tanastrophius as he's known now uh, I will see you guys next week bye bye John Voight is John Voight. Johnny Boy Voight is Johnny Boy Voight. Voight Johnny. Johnny Voight.